Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery of what might be the so-called fifth force in the universe. Let's talk about this and welcome to what the math. So let's start with baby steps. What exactly are the first four forces? Well, two of them you're quite familiar with. First one is gravity, the stuff that keeps you here on Earth, and is basically the uh, force that we can easily see everywhere in the universe. The other one is electromagnetism, which is not just the force inside Magnus, but it's also the way we currently generate most of the energy around us. So these two forces are quite obvious and quite familiar to us. But there are two more forces that are difficult to understand because that's the realm of subatomic physics. The so-called strong force is unfortunately invisible to us here in our realm, um, on our scale, but once you start zooming into the level of particles, you start noticing that things do interact a little bit differently there. And in this particular image, you see the force represented in black. And as you can see, the closer to the atomic scale you get, the stronger the force gets. When it's basically at the level of protons and neutrons, the force is about 140 times stronger than the electromagnetic force. And this is why it's known as the strong force. It's basically the strongest force out there. And to kind of wrap your hand around what it does, it basically holds atoms together. Here in this simple picture, you can see that the protons and the neutrons are held together by something. And this something is the so-called strong force. Without it, the atoms and the subatomic particles would actually just fall apart completely. Which now brings us to force number four, the weak force. This is a little more mysterious and was only officially proven in 1968 but this force kind of explains the so-called atomic decay, or basically how atoms change into other atoms with time. The concept of half-life depends on this force. Here, weak force allows subatomic particles to change their type or their flavor, as it's known in physics. And by letting these quarks change from one type to another, the weak force allows the atoms to then change as well, for example, changing the neutron into proton and allowing for the so-called nuclear decay. When the nuclear decay was originally discovered, uh, the very famous scientist Enrico Fermi, who was also part of the so-called Manhattan Project responsible for the development of the nuclear bomb, basically proposed that there's got to be something else going on with the atoms that allows them to decay. And that something was eventually discovered to be this weak force. And so for several decades, it sort of remained to be these four forces, these forces that have been confirmed, we've studied them in a lot of detail, and we know quite a lot about them. But we also always suspected that maybe there is another force. Maybe that force is actually responsible for dark matter and dark energy. Maybe there is something else going on that we can't really explain otherwise. And so the scientists from uh, Hungary back in 2015 decided to actually try to discover something known as dark photons that they believed were responsible for dark matter. And to try to discover this, they were basically bombarding various types of molecules with very energetic light to try to see how those molecules and atoms would react and maybe discover some kind of a secret in the process. For the experiment in 2015, they were essentially using the atoms of helium-4 and turning them into beryllium-8. But while doing so, they discovered something unusual. As they gave those atoms more and more energy, instead of essentially dispersing this energy in a regular way, some of the dispersion was very unusual, as if another particle or another unusual source of energy was actually changing things a little bit. More specifically, the angle that was formed right here was actually not meeting the expectations and the patterns that they were expecting to observe. It looked as if there was another particle that was being extracted from here, a particle whose mass was about 30 times heavier than the electron. And roughly around a year later, another paper came out sort of suggesting that it was actually not a particle at all, that this would be more easily explained if this was a completely new force, the so-called fifth force. And because this article was published in the Nature magazine with its prestige and its reputation to uphold, this was a very big deal. Many scientists tried to actually jump onto this discovery and see if this was correct. And now, only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, a new paper from the same team came out with more proof that this so-called X17 particle might be a real thing. 
They're naming it X17 because of the amount of energy that it has, which is roughly around 17 mega electron volts, which is, as I mentioned before, about 30 times more energy or more mass, the so-called rest mass, than a typical electron. Now, if you're not really familiar with what I'm talking about here, this is the idea that Einstein proposed about 100 years ago, that today we refer to as energy mass equivalence. In other words, mass is energy, energy is mass. That's kind of how the nuclear reactors work. So this E equals mc square applies to electrons and their mass can be defined in terms of the actual electron volts. And if you multiply this by around 30, you'll get the mass of the so-called X17 particle. And this time, instead of using beryllium, they just used helium. And just like before, they once again discovered a similar anomaly, suggesting something was coming out of atoms, something resembling a force, or maybe a new particle but probably a force. But before anyone jumps into any conclusions here, this is all we know about it. We basically just kind of roughly know the mass of this unusual particle, possibly what's known as a boson, which would be responsible for creating this force. But at the same time, there is absolutely no practical explanation to any of this yet. As a matter of fact, the scientists who studied this in a lot of detail realized that there is currently no physical theory that can explain what's happening. And at the same time, while the scientists behind this paper were actually trying to explain the mysterious dark matter, the signs of which are all over the universe, unfortunately, instead of finding this dark photon, they stumbled upon something completely new and mysterious. And as of today, this discovery has no unexplained physics or any kind of phenomenon that we can actually attribute to it. And it's very likely not an explanation for the mysterious dark matter. As a matter of fact, to try to explain what we're seeing, it's going to take an Einstein-like ability to connect the dots from various studies and various fields to try to understand what's happening, why it's happening, and how this might actually improve our lives later on. If you know the story of Einstein, he was able to actually connect ideas from several different scientists and synthesize physics from very different fields, making them into one clear idea. Something that he was very good at and something that many people admired him for. However, since then, a lot of new ideas have been proposed and so this synthesis or this idea combination has become a little bit more tricky. It takes a lot of reading to try to figure out what's really happening and how it might relate to real life. However, if this is a discovery of a new fifth force, it's definitely going to redefine our understanding of the world, while at the same time possibly rewriting the physics textbooks if all of this is correct. Now, it will probably take a lot more research and a lot more scientists participating in this to try to either explain this in some other ways or to try to understand what's really happening there and if we've discovered something that's fundamentally different. If this really is the so-called fifth force, we don't really know what it does, why it does it and how it affects the universe. But this is where things get really interesting because in the next few years, I'm sure someone will actually be able to explain it. Until then, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching. Check out the paper in the description below and subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something that you might have not known before. And also consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it actually does help me a lot. And if you'd like to remind yourself of how much of a wonderful person you are, check out the merch store for this channel. This is the first poster I've created for this, and it also comes in a t-shirt format that I'm wearing right now. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.